Hello everyone. So in this video, we are going to do some exploration of our data and we'll also create a log file to keep record of the outputs. And in the end, we'll also show you how to have, how to create a do file where we can actually store all our commands and run them all of them to run all of them together in the end. Okay. For re reproducibility purpose. Okay. So now, uh, first, again, I have my clean window, and so I, we have to load the data. And before we load, as I have shown in the previous video, maybe it's a good idea to check my working directory. I see that because I closed the data and opened it again, my working directory has changed. In the previous video, I have shown how you can set your working directory with the CD command, and then you put the location of your uh, data in here. Okay, so. So now I'm going to actually do this using the user interface. So I'm going to go to file and then I go to change working directory. Then I select the location of my working directory. Okay. So here actually I am, I set my working directory and then I'm going to click. Okay. So you see again, actually the command we can see already here, uh, instead of giving the command, uh, here, when we go to, when we do the, when we change the working directory using the user interface, it gives us the command here actually. Okay, so that's a good thing in the data. For all the functions that we will run actually from using our user interface, we'll always see the command here appearing here. So which is a good thing. In the future, we can actually use this command. We can copy them and use this in our do file. Okay, so also you can see all the commands are coming here. But so now we have set our working directory so now actually we can just use and we can say hs0 to get our data loaded okay but we can also open it from here so we can go and open yeah let's say i open it from here okay so it both were the same thing i have my data loaded here which looks good okay so now i don't have to run this command okay so now after I have loaded my data, now I'm going to do some basic exploration of my data. So before that, what I'm going to do, I'm going to create my log file. I'm going to begin a log file, okay? So I have to give a name to my log file. Let's say I give it log stata research hub, okay? So let's say this is my log file name and I'm going to save it, okay? So my log file is created until I will close my log file. All the things that I will be doing when we close my log file, then those will be updated there in my log file. So we'll see how it works. So now that we have our log file, now let's say we go to do some basic data exploration. So here we come to data and for describe data here and here we can actually do some description of data in our memory or file. Okay, so if I click here, so we have our data loaded in our memory. Okay, so we can just use this one. And here we can select the variables we want, but if we keep it empty, then we will see the descriptives for all the descriptives for all the variables. So if I click submit, so here I see this, right? Here I see all the information. But now, you know, if I click OK, then we will get the outputs and the window will go away. So let, let's do that. If I click it, you see, we get the output for the describe command, but then the window went away, right? So that's okay. So here we see that these are our variables. These are our storage type. Normally by default, the type is a float. Float actually takes the numerical values. And for the labels, it takes the string values, okay? And here we see some value labels. Okay, and here we see some variable label. Okay, so this is how our data looks like. And normally this digit here, this gives the white of the cells where the data is contained. Okay, and here the zeros, they normally, they indicate the decimal points. So here we have zero, that means we don't have any decimal points. If we had two, that would mean we have two decimal. If we had three, that would mean three decimal. Okay. So now one thing is that, let's say if I want to look into only one variable, I see that we use the describe command. Okay. So if I want to just quickly see 
the describe window back instead of going here like you know going here clicking here and then clicking here uh, instead of doing that we can just say db describe so db is the command to get our window back and then we get our window back okay and here i can actually select any variable i want let's say i select this one i can select one i can select multiple so let's say i select these ones okay and then i click submit so i get only my description for those variables that i have selected here i can also control uh, what information i want to see okay so this is the describe common if we go to describe here we have some more option to explore our data for instance codebook this is another common that is also widely used so let's say if i leave it empty and if i click submit or if i click ok even then i see the information for all my variables here okay so in in codebook actually we see some more information uh, for instance we see if we have any missing values or not uh, here we also see the labels of different variables of our data as you can see right and the frequency of each of the variables uh, for the gender variable we see that uh, how many are male and how many are female we also see the range here so you see that we see some more information uh, when we use the codebook information for continuous variable we see the percentiles okay values in the percentile the mean and the standard deviation so we see actually some more information again if we want to get the code back window we should actually we can just say db code book okay so then we get the window back we can actually select code book only for one variable okay multiple variables so this is how we can see some more properties of our data okay as you see whatever command we are writing here they are being listed here in the history and here of course we can see our data uh hold all the variables in our data and if we select one of them we see their information here okay the variable properties here and here we have the total uh data properties right and then we can also do some more things for instance here if we go to data inspect variables again we can do it for all of them so here we can see some distribution of the data actually and if we have some negative uh, the type of numbers we have negative positive zero if we have any missing values okay and again similarly as before we can actually do it for uh, any single variable or multiple variables okay so if i click here as you can see we get only two of them or three of them so now i click yeah inspect program science so that's what we get another interesting tool is the list so here when we go to list actually that we can see the values for different variables for a range so for instance if i just click list then what do we see all the variables all the variables all the observations as you can see here okay and all the values so this is observation number 113 and here we see this okay so these were the inputs this is the data for observation number 113 but sometimes actually this is not what we want so normally it is most useful when we select one or two variable of importance and we want to see some range of data so to do that let's say here we select this variable read and then if we go here by if in so here we can actually do the uh, do the run the same command for multiple groups of variables and here we can also restrict observations but now let's say if we select this one and we say that okay give us the values from observation 10 to observation 20 okay and then if we click submit so this is what we get or read we get this information okay so this is where it is actually mostly interesting so let's say if we have some outlier in some number of observation we see that in box plot or somewhere and okay and this part of the data we have some outliers and we suddenly want to see those observations in detail for a particular variable that's when we can actually use this so if i if we want to see let's say from 100 to let's say 120 so we can just use this command list read in 100 to 120 okay so then we get all these values if we want to see more than one variable so let's we can say read write 
So we see both the variables, okay? If we want to see a range of variables, so for instance, let's say we start at read and then we end in, let's say, S O C S T. So all these variables in the range we will see, as you can see here, okay? So although I'll be using a lot of this click and point and click window, but as you can see, just using this command and how these commands work actually makes our work quite faster. You know, if I had to go and do these things every time and select everywhere, that takes a lot of time. We can just do a little bit of uh, updating the commands and then we get the results much more faster, okay? If you want to count the number of observations in the whole data, you can say, okay, count, and then it gives you the overall number of observations. And you can do, let's say, count, read, greater than, let's say, greater than or equal to 50. So now you will see how many of the students got more than 50, okay? I uh, did a small mistake here. It should be count if read greater than 50. So now you see it is higher than 117. So similarly here, if you want to see how many of the students scored more than 60, you see 56. You can change to any variable, okay? So let's say if we write right, we get the result for right. So this is how actually we can simply do some uh, exploration of our data. Maybe we want to see how many of the respondents are female. So let's say our variable for that is gender. So we said gender equal to one. For equal to in these commands, we always have to use double equal to, okay, then one. Yeah, so here you see the interesting part is we don't have a variable called gender. Our variable is actually called female. Okay, so if I go here and I call it female, female equal to one, and now I see 100. So it means out of the two observations we have in our data, 109 are female, and then 91 are male. Okay, but now this is actually misleading to have this variable name female, right? Uh, maybe it's better to have it as gender and then we should put labels as uh, one is female and zero is male. So in the next video, we will see actually how to make some modifications in our data, okay? Meanwhile, if you remember, we opened our log, right? So it is a good time to actually close our log. So when we close our log, then we will see that in our working directory, we have a file. Okay, so here we have a file log stata research hub. So now if we open this, we'll see that all the commands we ran and all the results we have received, all of them we can view here. Okay, so that's the main idea of log to keep track of all the outputs that we generated. Okay.